Yeah, you know, uh, we went to the, uh, the Mariner game uh, yesterday with a bunch of folks from our church. It was fantastic. You see our name up on the big screen, and uh, if you look real close, you can see some people from our church in there. Um, you know, what was, <laughs> what was fun was, uh, uh, one, it was an amazing game, okay? The most home runs in the history of the Mariners kind of thing, um, but... Um, uh, we were sitting, and there was, it was Faith and Family Day, so lots of different churches represented there, the whole thing. And Sandy and I get to go about three times a year to a, to a game, and m- most of the time we go, we'll have beer spilt on us and people dropping the F-bomb and yelling at the refs and yelling at the bums that were out there playing. and you know, Just a little too much, you know, whatever's going on there. And uh, it's, it's, you know, I get it. We're, we're in the world but, you know, when my daughter's with us, it's like, I don't, really, I don't, I don't want you to, I don't, you don't need to see that, hear that kind of thing. None of that happened. None of that happened. We were just surrounded by people of faith. And it was just, yeah, it just made, it just it was different. Now, now, I understand. I understand. Not everyone of faith um, is, is clean and, and, and doesn't drop the F-bomb, right? And, and doesn't sometimes spill, spill stuff on other people. I, I get it. I get it. It's, it's what we're in is we're in process. We're, we're in this series called Transformation, Transformers. And each one of us are in process of being transformed. There's nobody who's instantly transformed. These ladies in the Adult Teen Challenge program, they're in process. Some have been there a couple months. Some have been there for, what, you know, Heidi, where's Heidi? She's, she's going to step in. We're, we're, I don't see you. She left. Oh, there she is. She's going to step into leadership. When she came here, she didn't know who she was. Good grief. Um, Sierra. (laughs) Five years in prison. She's in process, right? People look at the church, look at people in the church, and their favorite word for us is hypocrites. Yeah. And you know what? To a large degree, they're right. All right. Um, I am a hypocrite. The Bible teaches me to do one thing and I do something else. And I say that I believe this book and follow this book and want to obey this book and the whole thing. And yet, if you followed me around, there'd be days you're like, uh, hypocrite. I'd go guilty. Yes. But here's what's amazing. I'm in process. I'm I'm working this thing out. Um, No one has arrived. Some people are further along than others. My mouth... Oh, I haven't welcomed the Wilberforce team. Those of you that were here for the Wilberforce conference, God bless you guys from all over the world. It's really a, 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 a bl- pleasure of ours to host you. Hopefully you, you were treated well. Dr. Cooney is here someplace. He's way in the back. He's, he's, he's dead dog tired. He goes, I survived. I survived. Uh, it's for his first time he put on a conference like this, and uh, I've heard nothing but great reports from it. So thank you guys. None of us have, have arrived. Um, it, it, you know, we, we, we call people hypocrites, but a lot of times it's like looking at a little baby, a little three-month-old, and going, you, you baby, you, how come you, how come you're such a baby? Like, I'm three months old. I can't even tell you that. You don't know where the person is in their process, in their growth, in their maturity. They may be just joining teen and adult challenge. I just got out of prison. How many, how many did you swallow? Five years in prison. How many, t- how many fentanyl did you swallow? A hundred. Yeah, a hundred. I just swallowed a hundred fentanyl. I don't get it all. What have you swallowed lately? What are you battling? Right? Oh, I'm a Christian. Oh, you hypocrite? Yeah. Yeah, I'm in process. I'm growing. I'm not there yet. And you know what's exciting? Is these people grow. That little three-month-old baby with loving parents, mom and dad who help it, that little baby's gonna grow. It's gonna mature. And you guys, every one of us, if we, if we stay in the process, we're gonna grow, we're gonna mature. It's really exciting. You're not who you're going to be. Now, when you look at a 40-year-old and you go, you baby, when are you gonna grow up? When are you stop being a baby? Now, you might go, hey, there may be something wrong there emotionally, psychologically, right? Neurodiversity going on. Um, when I was in school, in, in elementary school, they had to do, they didn't have it, they didn't call it back then, um, 
uh, AEDs, were they? IEPs. IEPs, thank you. Thank you. Last service I said IUDs, and they go, no, no, no. No, that's, that's not what you want to talk about. Uh, and, and okay, so I didn't make that mistake again. Um, IEPs, right? They didn't call them that. They called it special education. Charlie, you need special education. And somebody, a loving teacher, an educator said, hey, I'm not going to discard this young man. He comes from a jacked up home. He ought to end up in prison. Like my grandfather was in. He ought to be on alcohol and drugs like his parents. But somebody said, hey, I'm going to love you, and mature you, and put you in an IEP. And who would have ever dreamed? I know they didn't think about this. Dude, you can't even spell. You're in the fifth grade. You get, you, what, what's wrong with you? Instead, hey. And just a few years ago, I received a doctorate in ministry. You're like, what? Not Charlie. Yeah. Yeah, because somebody cared. Somebody showed grace and patience and compassion. The Bible teaches us how we grow up how we mature, how we go from little baby into something greater. Uh, it talks about how each of us need teachers, pastors, community group leaders. Somebody says, hey, hey, right now you're this, but we're gonna show you patience, and instead of calling you a hypocrite, we're gonna say, hey, you're, just, you're, you're, you're on the journey. We're working it out, we're walking it out. Some of us need special education. Some of us need IEPs in church. The people who helped you come to faith, the Bible talks about our parents in the faith, people who helped you experience Jesus. Your brother, what was that? What was that? Uh, Heidi, uh, no. Um, Brenda, Brenda, your, your brother helped lead you in a prayer. He's like your father in the faith, your parent in the faith says, hey, here's the one who's going to lead you to Christ. Now, the explosion didn't hurt, right? It set him up, you know, you're in that terrible fire. That's awful. But somebody helped you come to that place, and somebody helped you come to that place. They're your parents in the faith. We need each other to help one another, to walk out this thing together, to hold us accountable. Here's this word every one of you hate, accountability accountability. We need accountability to grow. Here's the deal. No one can force you to grow up. No one can make you grow. Why don't you just grow, huh? Until, and Teen Challenge, Adult Teen Challenge has proved this, until somebody is willing to say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer, we can't help you. You can come and live at the home and you can spend 12 months with us, but you will not be helped. You will go out the same way, if not worse, than when you came in. But when you finally come to the place and say, I need accountability. I need someone to watch over me. There's no special education plan that will help you until you submit to it. Someone can be a Christian and still be an immature baby Christian. Even though they've come to church for years. Oh, man, I go every Sunday. Sure. Sure, but never grown up. And people see a hypocrite. You go to that church? Yeah, I've been there from the beginning. Well, at what point, at some point, are you going to learn to walk? Learn to stop dropping the F-bomb and spilling on people? What? It, you know, it's, it's like a person who's, who's renting a room from their parents uh, rather than submitting to their parents as a son or daughter. You know, someone who's renting a room from their parents says, all right, here's the agreement, right? Got to be in by 10, lights out by 11, no loud music, take your shoes off, you can use this part of the fridge, right? Clean up your own dishes. You got a bunch of rules, but when it's family, family says, hey, can you mow the lawn today? Sure, Dad. Now, it didn't always happen in my home that, quite that quick. <laughs> but sure, Dad. Hey, can you take your sister to Target? All right, I'll, I'll make the drive. Why? Because we're family. It's your sister. It's your family. It's part of, the, part of the thing of being in the family. You mow the yard. You pick up your own dishes. 
Not following the rules. You're in the community of family. A renter would say, hey, wait a minute, that's not my lease agreement. You never said I had to take my sister to the store and part of my renting thing here. It's right here. Hey, hey. Hey, no, 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 no. Mowing the lawn is not in the agreement. See, you can come to church or you can rent church. You put a little money in the, in the box to not feel guilty. Um, it's part of your, your rent. And can I say that if you give to Church on the Ridge because you feel obligated to or you feel guilt into it, you're in the renting stage. Family never feels guilty, never feels obligated. Of course I'm going to support a church that supports Teen Challenge. Of course I'm going to support a church. They did an all-nighter. Your daughter looked fine, by the way. I saw her upstairs in the, in the kids' room, and I went, you know what? People who are part of the family paid for that kids' room. Junior high kids all over that place. And you can tell they're junior high because the smell hits you when you walk through the door. <laughs> wow. That's maybe why we can't find a youth pastor. They, you know. if, if you're feeling obligated to, 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 to put a little in the plate, man, you're, you're renting. Of course, of course I'll, I'll give you a ride to the airport. You know, we have a community group. They, they have the airport plan. Uh, they're, they're empty nesters, and so they, they give each other rides to the airport. Yeah, your family, of course. I have to pay 100 bucks for the Uber guy. You know, no, we're, we're, we're family. Um, two people can have the same address, completely different experience. One is family, the other is renter. And depending on who you meet coming out of that house will give you an impression of what the people are like in that home. Right? Uh, those kids in that home, they're wonderful. Man, I hope my kids become friends with their kids. Another person says, the kids in that home? Oh, man, don't, I won't even let my kids. No, 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 no. They're, 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 forget it. Uh, no way they're playing with those kids. Same home, same address. That's why people can look at people in church and they come from the same church. Oh, those judgmental, terrible people call themselves Christians or Hey, you know the people at Church on the Ridge? Man, they have a program called Teen and Adult Challenge. They help these, these people get out of addictions and habits and hurts, and man, they pour into them, and they make sure that these people are cared for. They let them stay there for free for a year. They don't have to, no, they just, hey, they'll commit to the program. And, and the people of Church on the Ridge pay for this. They're wonderful people. People in family transform. People who are part of a church and they're in the family, renters stay the same. Uh, some churches try to get as many renters as they can. Hey, just say, hey, get more people, get more money, whatever. Church and Renters is not here to get more renters. We invite people in and we call them our guests. Call them our guests. Hey, last, last week we had a picnic because we don't want you to remain a guest, we want you to become friends. And so we interact together, and I hit uh, Corinne with a marshmallow when I was practicing my chip shot with the mar Hit her right in the head, she was standing away in the back. She looked at me and she laughed, and we're friends. We don't want you to remain friends. At some point we invite you in, become family. I see Kevin Welty over there, we were at the game yesterday together. Why do we do that Mariners game? Oh, because we love the Mariners. There's some people there that didn't even like baseball. But they said, I went there because I want to make friends. I want to make friends. Kevin Welty made all the food for our picnic last week. All that pulled pork, all the salads, all the macaroni and cheese. You were amazing, brother. Yeah. It's what I do. It's my family. I cook for the family. Some of you are wonderful cooks. You cook for the family. It's what I do. It's my love language. Yeah, it's awesome. We're not, here to, we're not here to get as many rangers as we can. We're here to make family. Reach every home in this region and help them become fully devoted followers of Jesus. This is why Paul would write in Romans 12, 1. Therefore, I urge you, brothers. What's he saying? Therefore, I urge you, family. Brothers, family, in view of God's mercy, in view that you would reach down and pick me up out of that miry clay and put my feet upon a rock and you'd change my life in view of that, what God would do for me, 
I present your offer, your bodies, a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. This is not a rule. You don't follow the rules. That's what the legal thing says. It's not a contract and you broke your lease. No, it's just part of the family, of course. And, uh, Another, another translation puts it like this. Therefore, I exhort you, brothers and sisters, again, family, by the mercies of God, present your bodies a sacrifice, alive, holy, pleasing to God, which is just reasonable. Come on, you're part of the family. See, if you just show up, you will not be transformed. You got to decide, I'm going to participate. I'm going to be a part of this thing. That's why we are encouraging every single person in our church, renter or family or in between, to sign up for 6060. Become a part of this thing. Say, hey, I'm going to take, put my toe in the water. I'm going to find out. And you're going to connect with people that you're going to fall in love with. And you're going to connect with a God who you didn't know loved you as much as he does. You're going to actually hear God's voice. I told you last week, I can guarantee it. You will hear his voice. I've never heard God's voice. God doesn't talk to me. Oh, yeah, he does. And we're going to put an opportunity together for you to be able to go, oh, that was God. I know what he sounds like. Oh, your family, it's reasonable. You know, I'm part of a family, the Salmon family. It's my last name is Salmon. I don't go to my house to become a Salmon, to be Salmon. I'm Salmon wherever I go. Wherever I go. Hey, it's Max, yeah. Oh, he's a Salmon, yeah. We got little baby Amos Salmon. <laughs> and, 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 and have you heard? We're going to have another baby. Yeah, Sandy's so excited. She's a little worried about stretch marks, but she's so excited. <laughs> no, no, no. Stephen and Rebecca are going to have another baby. Yeah, little baby girl. It's, it's going to be adorable. It's just great. And they're salmons. They're salmons. They're part of the family. And when you come to church, you don't, you, don't be, you don't come to church and go, hey, I'm here. Now I'm a Christian. No. You're a follower of Jesus wherever we go. Today, I'm going to ask you a question at the very end. Give you an opportunity to join the family. Not church membership. Not renting. Not sign a contract. But to be born in it. The Bible talks about being born again into the family. Here's what the family looks like in further on in Romans 12. How many of you believe we're going to get through Romans 12 before we have to start 6060? <laughs> Not a single hand in the room. <laughs> it's a laughter all right just as each of us has one body with many members he's talking about family hey and these members don't have the same function oh some have this function this one does this so in Christ we who are many form one body and each member belongs to all the others it's family we have different gifts according to the grace that's been given to us well, if a man's gift is prophesying, well, that's a cool gift. I want that one. Oh, I don't know. Uh, let, him, let him use it in the proportion to his faith. If it's serving, let him serve. Nobody wants that gift. No, no, no. I don't know. That's a stupid gift, serving. Uh, if it's teaching, let him teach. If it's encouraging, let him encourage. If it's contributing, that's the other one I hate. <laughs> no, I'm not going to give generously. Um, if it's leadership, let him govern diligently. If he shows mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Three things in seven minutes. Number one, we need each other. We need each other. Uh, each member belongs, the Bible says, to all the others. We are a part of each other. Uh, this is not normal in our culture. You guys understand that. This is not normal. Our culture says, I don't need you. I can do it on my own. I can make it on my own. I'm going to make sure that I don't need anybody. You know, if you live here in the east side of King County, anywhere in this area, you know this to be true. You don't even know your neighbors. They won't ask you for anything. Uh, you just, you hate, in fact, it would be a sin if you went to your neighbors and said, hey, can I borrow a cup of sugar? <laughs> Whoa, no, what's wrong with you? You can't afford sugar? <laughs> we don't need anything until we do. Until we do. Renters don't need anything. We got a contract. Until you can't pay the rent. And you get the eviction notice. I, I meet people who come to church on the ridge and they're in the process of getting evicted. 
I, I wish they would come to me before, before they got the eviction or, or it was getting close because we could, we could do a little more to, to help them out. Um, but the first thing I do, they come, pastor, pastor, hey, this is what's going on, and it's an eviction notice. It's a metaphor. You understand that. And, and the first thing I do, Pastor Kevin is in charge of our benevolence fund, our compassion fund, where we help people with rent and challenges and, and, and stuff that they need. And we, we ask the question, um, are they in a community group? Who's, who's their family? Who's their, who's their small part of the family? You have the reunion on Sundays, but every, every week we meet in homes and we, we get to know each other. Is this person accountable? Is this person submitted to anyone? Are they, are they, in, are they in the family? And inevitably, the answer is no. Almost every time the answer is no. Because what happens when people are in a community group, in a family group, that family says, hey, we got you. We got you. We know you're in trouble. Okay, we got you. We'll take care of you. The second thing we ask is, do they contribute? Do they, do they serve in any way? Are they, are they part? Are they helping out someplace? And I can almost, again, guarantee you the person is, no, no. Uh, and then we ask, do they even come here? <laughs> oh, yeah, we see them on Sunday, you know. And Jeff's team uses one that goes, yeah, they, 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 we, we see them. See, family says we're all in this together. We need each other. Family says, we're, we're going to take care of one another. Of course we'll help you. But here's the deal. All of us, all of us, all of us will face eviction at some point. You get the call. And money is not the answer. Just ask Jess Bezos or Bill Gates. She doesn't want to be with me anymore, Pastor. I'm being evicted from my marriage. My kids are, are running around and we don't know where they're at. I'm being evicted as a parent. I got the call from the doctor and they say it's inoperable. I'm getting the eviction notice on our physical health. And we don't know where to turn. We don't know where to go. Where's your family? I always thought I could do it on my own. I always thought I didn't need anyone else. But you and I both know that we need each other. And God said, I've created a family. Number two, when you were created, God gave you abilities. God gave you your abilities. When you were created, God said, hey, I want to put some things in you, each one different according to their grace, the Bible says. So we have different gifts, verse 6 starts out. They're different, but don't miss this. You have a gift. Oh, God didn't give me anything. Oh, I'm not good. I, I couldn't use anything in the church. I couldn't use anything for God. I, I'll just do my job over here. No, it's the, no, you were given a gift for the family. Forever. First Peter puts it like this. But you are the ones chosen by God. You were chosen by God. The high calling of priestly work. This is real stuff chosen to be holy people, God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him and tell others night and day the difference he's made in you, the transformation he's made in your life. It's what these ladies did this morning. I used to be this, and now I'm in process. I'm being transformed. I try to do this every week. You guys go, oh, Charlie, we know so much about your life. You suck. I go, I know, I know, but God's changing me. God's changed me. I used to be that, and now I'm, I'm, not, quite, I'm not quite that. But, but I'm in process, folks. And so are you. And the gifts and abilities he's placed in me. I go, thank you, God. And here's, here's the deal. I hear three excuses all the time why people don't use their gifts for the kingdom, their abilities that God gave them. They only use them on themselves. Uh, number one, letter A, I'm too busy. Pastor, I'm so busy, man. I can barely get any time away. I can't get any time here. I can't. And I can tell you this. The people that tell me that they're too busy for doing God's work, I watch their family. They're too busy for their kids. They're too busy for their spouse. They're too busy for their own self-help, for their own self-soul care. They're so busy that they're not taking care of anything. They're pouring everything. Their God has become their work. Their God has become their hobby. Their God has become something else. And they wonder why they're being evicted from their family. They wonder why they're being evicted from their health. They wonder why they're being evicted from all these places because they're so busy. And when you're too busy for God, whoa, I can promise you, I can just begin to look. Oh, 
Here are the other places. My life verse, Matthew 6, 33. It's not in your notes. I set my alarm to 633, 633, so it goes, oh yeah, that's right. Seek first the kingdom of God and his rightness, and then God will take everything else. Do the God stuff first, and God takes everything else. When you try to do everything else first, you're on your own. You're on your own. Um, commit your, your ways to the Lord, and your plans will be achieved. I got a lot of plans. Oh, I better stop and commit her to God. When we do the 66, you're going to hear God say, yes, no. Oh, that's not my plan. Charlie, don't do that. Oh, there's nothing wrong with it. No, there's nothing wrong with it, except I don't want you to do it. Because I got something better for you over here. Will you trust me for something better? Until, until you go through something like 66, you won't know what that voice sounds like. Um, letter B. Um, a, too busy. Uh, letter B, I'm not qualified. I've never done church work. I've never done anything for God. I don't think I can. I don't know what I could do. I'm not good enough. Uh, I'm not holy enough. I'm not spiritual enough. I never read the Bible. I, I, just, I just don't know. Hebrews 13 says this, may the God of peace equip you with everything good for doing his will. Equip you for everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him. Do you realize a 16-year-old is not qualified to drive a car? I, I was looking at the Mahal's car uh, walking in this morning, and it says on the back, they got a sticker, it says, student driver, please be patient. <laughs> Little Charlie's learning how to drive. She was born in this church. It's crazy. But, you know, student driver, please be patient. You know what they're doing? I don't know if it's, I don't know if it's Tony or Jeff, the one who's teaching her, but saying, hey, Charlie, you know, let's go slow. Let's, let's go to the church. Everyone comes to the church parking lot. To, 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 and I, God bless you. Just run into the pillars in the back. Don't be careful. Um, Hey, let, let's go slow. And we're just going to go around the church. We're just going. Now we'll go the other way so you know how to turn to the right also. And we're going to just go, go around. What is that? Somebody gave an IEP. Somebody said, we're going to be patient with you. Hey, you're 16. You should know how to drive, you hypocrite. No. No, we're walking with you. Why? Because we're family. And we love you. And I know you're not qualified. I know you're not qualified. Jesus knew his team was not qualified. A group of men and women that walked with him three years before he finally said, ladies, I'm going to release you. Men, I'm going to release you. Hey, you're not qualified yet, but hang with me, and we'll get you there. I know you're not qualified. We have 101, 201, 301. We have a pathway to get you to a place where you go, hey, we've got people that love you, and say, let me, let me hold your hand. When little baby Amos was learning how to walk. He holds Zappy's hand. He calls me Zappy, for short for Zap Apanea. He can't quite say the whole thing yet, so he just says Zappy. And he's close, though. He, he said it to me, but not to his parents. Zap um, and and, he, and, he's, and he's learning to walk. And he goes, hey, I'm safe with Zappy's hand. I can do this with Zappy's hand. And the father says, hey, you hold on to my hand. And you hold on to your family saying, I got family members who will treat you be just like your zappy, and they'll, they'll walk with you, and you'll get there. Uh, let her see. I'm kind of scared. What if somebody asks me a question I can't answer? What if I put in a situation where I don't know what to do? One of my favorite verses in the Bible, Isaiah 41.10, you ought to learn it, memorize it, put it on your fridge, tattoo it to your forehead. It says, fear not, for I am with you. Zappy's got you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. And I'm big. And I can hold you, and I will strengthen you, and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Come on. God has placed people here in the church to hold your hand, and he's giving you an opportunity to serve, and i got to close. There's an opportunity everywhere we look to serve. Last, some, some of the instructions that Jesus gave his disciples before he sent them out on one of his trial runs. In Luke 10, he says, these were instructions to them. The harvest is great. What is he talking about? There's a lot of work to do. Think about in, in King County, 80% of the people do not go to church. I think it's upwards now after COVID up to 90%. Do not go to church anywhere. King County, huge, big time. The harvest is available. <laughs> the market is ripe. We got people everywhere that need Jesus. He says, um, 
but the workers are few. Wow. So, so pray the Lord who's in charge of the harvest, ask him to send more workers in the field. Whenever Jesus asks uh, this kind of question, he does it a number of times in, in, the, in the Gospels. Whenever he asks this kind of question, he's not saying, pray so that rock will go into the harvest. Thank you, rock. Pray, oh God, I pray rock will go into the harvest. I pray that Daniel will go into the harvest. Oh man, I pray that. No, what he's saying is when you pray this, God, the harvest, look at it. The, oh, pray that I, will be the worker in the field. Pray that I will be the one. Why? Because, man, it's a little scary. I'm really busy. I'm not qualified. But God, speak to me. I will take the 60-60 challenge, and I will be submitted and accountable, and I will go where you want me to go and be who you want me to be. Here I am, Lord. Send me. And the opportunity is everywhere. The harvest field is ripe. We have youth ministry. Right now, I mentioned the smelly junior high kids, man. That is awesome. We have 2,500, something like that, students in our high school right here, not counting the private schools. Do you realize less than 300 of them are in any youth group anywhere? What are we going to do? Hey, Lord, pick me. Pick me. You know, I, you know, I don't like doing traditional stuff in church. I, don't, I can't sing in the choir. I can't change diapers. I don't, I don't want to do you know, uh, uh, somebody called me this week and said, Charlie, got an idea. Cop ministry. Cop ministry. I went, man, we've got like 10, 15 police officers in our church. We can do a cop ministry. That would be huge. Do you know the divorce rate among police officers is like 70, 80 percent? Did you guys know that? Right? It's, it's, it's wild. And somebody's got to put their arm and say, we're going to do an IEP. We're going to make sure that you guys have a family and support because you need it. I thought, genius, let's do it. Ah, Tom Wilkins uh, stopped me last Sunday, and, and it's always dangerous, stopped me between service. He goes, Charlie, Charlie, listen to this. Uh, you know, we want to reach everybody. I go, yeah. He goes, dogs. <laughs> dogs. Come on, everybody's got a dog. Do you know the number of dog owners went up 40% since COVID? <laughs> right? 40% of more than there were before. Everybody's got a dog. And I went, cool idea. And he goes, oh. You want to see a dog? And then he shows me his 14-week-old basset hound named Goofy. Or, uh, it's not Goofy. What is it? Goose. Yeah, Goose. About as Goofy as Goose, but uh, Goose. And just the slobber and ears. It was the sweetest thing I ever saw in my life, man. The next day, I'm, 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 uh, we're, we're talking, and uh, I went, dog show. Dog show. <laughs> So Kwame Valley's first annual dog show sponsored by Church on the Ridge. So we'll, we'll be backed up down the parkway worse than the, the road crew, man. We'll have people coming us with their dogs. And so, so uh, 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 Pastor Greg, uh, our interim music guy, he says, hey, do you know, do you know um, this, this guy, DeWalt? And I go, I, I can't quite put the name to the face, so, so, I, so I stalk him, right? You know how you do? And, and I stalk him, and I see, oh, oh, yeah, I know him. He's a great guy. He'll be a great drummer for you. And then I go, I forget what his wife looks like. So I punch on there, and, and it's Allie. And I look at Allie, and Allie's page is nothing but Dalmatians. <laughs> Dalmatians. And then it's got these ribbons, and it's got these awards that, that, that she's won at that dog shows, or her dogs have won. And I'm going, this is Monday after the dog thing was told. And I'm going, okay, God, I'm, I'm, you know, 60, I don't need 60, 60. The light, light is blaring in my face. So I do this thing that nobody ever does anymore, but I'm a boomer, so I do it. I pick up the phone, and I, and I dial the number, and, uh, and I call. And she picks up. And she's like a millennial or like an exer or something because they never pick up the phone. Like, hey, text me. Don't be calling. But she picked up. See, she's an educator. We prayed for her a minute ago, and so she's smart, one of the smart ones. And uh, she said, hey, Allie, this is Charlie. Goes, yeah, like, uh, why are you calling? And I go, hey, you're a dog person, right? Didn't tell her. I just stalked her on Facebook. And she goes, yeah, uh, I love dogs. And I go, hey, I was thinking about doing, uh, you know, a dog show. And before I could even get dog shot, she goes, I'm in, I'm in. She's sitting right over here. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking the truth, right? Yeah. And, and she goes, I'm in. And then she says, oh, I got friends that got apparatuses. I go, oh, cool. I don't even know what that is. Oh, but they'll bring them. And, and I know vets, and, and they can do some stuff. And, and I go, oh, this is going to be it. So she's putting together a business plan for us. If you want to be part of the dog ministry, first annual Snoqualmie dog show. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be huge. People that will not darken the door of a church will come because Goose is coming. 
floppy ears and all. And we're going to give some of the best awards away. You know, the shortest dog, the tallest dog. This is not going to be AKC uh, approved or SPA approved, right? The look like Jesus dog. The look like Jesus, yeah. Looks like their owner dog too, you know. It's, it's going to be amazing. Why? Why? Because the harvest is great. And the opportunity is in front of us. And all Allie needs is someone to say, hey, I'll serve. I'll clean up dog poop. <laughs> you know, serving, nobody, nobody likes, you know. <laughs> but, but I'll do it because there's somebody that's going to bring a dog who's being evicted. Not the dog. The owner. Their marriage is in trouble. Their kids are in trouble. They found out that their daughter has been picked up for fentanyl for the tenth time and they're going to be going away and their heart is broken they don't know where to turn hey your dog sure is cute but can I tell you about my Jesus and the family that you can belong to oh my goodness there's seven gifts there I don't have time to teach on any of them let's, let's stand together Are you a renter or your family? If you're family, you're going to participate in 6060. You're going to say, yeah, of course. This is what we do as a family. We walk it out together. And you may have been here a long time. You go, this is the fourth 6060 I've done. <laughs> yet you're laughing at me, Damaris. <laughs> Seriously, four. But you know what, Damaris? The person sitting next to you next Sunday is going to look at you and go, are you doing it? You're going to go, yeah, yeah, I'm doing it. Okay, if you're doing it, I'm going to do it. And what you're not going to say is, yeah, it's my fourth time. I'm not going to do it this time. <laughs> I don't need it. I'm arrived. No. I'm in process. And I'm growing. And I'm not who I used to be, and I'm not who I'm going to be, but man, God is transforming my life. I'm so proud of you, ladies. Wow, wow, and it makes me get up in the morning and do it again because what did Kevin say, Pastor Kevin, what did you say? It works, it works, yeah. Are you renting or are you family? It starts by joining, you know, guest, friend, family. Jesus said this in John 1. He came into the very world he created but the world didn't recognize him. Jesus, really? It's not real. Some of you are there. You're not sure. He even came to his own people. I grew up in church. Went to Sunday school. Did all that stuff. No, you, you said that. Sang on the worship team. I was there. But it says they rejected him. They rejected him. But I love this last part. But to all who accepted him and believed in him. To them gave he the right to be called the family, the children of God. It's being born again. Lord, I accept you. I receive you. It's that simple prayer that I'm going to ask you. I'm gonna, you can pray with me right now. Jesus, I need you. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. I no longer want to be a renter. I no longer just want to come to church. My life is too busy. I'm not qualified. It scares me to death. But God, I'm here. And I say, yes. I believe in you. I accept you into my life. I need an IEP. I need help growing up. I need a hand to hold on to so I can walk without falling. Maybe you're here this morning and you got the eviction notice and you needed help. You came to the right place. There's a family here. Hey, let's, let's pick you up. Let's get you out. Let's move you on. And you can see a brighter day. In Jesus' name, amen.